Okay. 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 Let's see what happens going to happen in here. So this gray block that we have, the gray blocks, all the gray blocks that we have here, we can't change anything into that and we can't remove them. So it basically means that we just can add on three places. Either we can add something here, we can add something here, or we can add something here. So the code for this squirrel is very simple. All it needs to do is that it needs to reach this account. And for that, what it needs to do is follow your code. Your code is going to help this squirrel get to this account. So this code, the first block says that repeat until you reach the account. And these are the things that you are going to repeat until you do that from let me put some annotations here. So these are the things, anything that you write between these, this code is going to be the one that's going to decide for the squirrel what it needs to do. So the first thing that they are hinting us to do is that this squirrel should keep moving forward because they are checking the path ahead first. So, if you would see this, this has two blocks here. One says do and the other one says else. So do is going to be going to do something that is that you want your character to do if this condition is true, which means that if there is path ahead, what do you want your character to do? Like, Iman, I, if I ask you this question, what do you feel? If there is a path ahead, what should your character do? Move forward. Yes, it should move forward. So that's why we are going to pick up move forward and add it here. But let's say that this condition is not valid or path ahead is not available. There is no path ahead. Let's say when you reach this tile over here, there would be no path ahead. So what do you want your character to do after that? In case this condition cannot be practiced, you are going to tell your character to follow this condition. This condition says else and there is another condition into that which says if path to the right, if you have a path to the right, if you have a path to the right, what should you do? Now, this condition is going to be followed if there is no path ahead. Now, if there is no path ahead, it is going to check on both sides before turning into any direction. So if there is a path, then it can turn. Otherwise, it would turn in the other direction. So this says if path to the right. It means that if there is a path available on the right side, this character needs to turn towards the right side. And... In case this path is not available again, that path to the right is not available, then it's going to do something that we would write in the else condition. So there are only three things that this character needs to do. Either move forward or turn into one of the directions, either right or either left. So we have already coded that it can turn right. In case it can't do move forward or it can't do turn right, it should do this turn left. And we are going to add it here. Now, when I would run it, it would most probably get to the account on the top. Okay, let's try to run it and see what happens. Okay. Can I come from the washroom? Sir, my one is done. Ah, get out. Sir, I finished. Yes, if you have finished it, all you need to do is click on finish and that's it. But if you Sir, let's say is this only the kids who would do all the 20 levels without losing their progress, they would get this. But I have also got the certificate here. So what you can do here is just write your name here like that. Okay, so let me write it. And then click on submit. Once you submit that, you will see that the certificate of completion will show your name here. Oh my God, I'm here. Sarah, submit also. So if you have submitted, all you need to do is click on print after that. Come on. 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 Come on.
So once you click on print, this is going to open in front of you. You can right click that and save image as and save it in your computer. Like Umar certificate. So you have got a certificate from code.org that says that you have completed the R of code exercise, which deals with the basic concepts of computer science. So that is what the certificate tells you. Okay. Very good for you guys if you would keep the certificate safe somewhere with you. Okay. So now we go towards our today's activity that I had planned earlier. So this activity is about creating a game. Before creating that game, I'm going to show you that game. That game is Flappy Bird. So we are going to try. Sorry. What did you say? Okay. So Flappy Bird is kind of a very interesting game. The uh, why this is interesting is because it's it's challenging. It's Why? a 90s game. It's not 90s game. It was released in late 2000s. Uh, but still... Achha, I have this. Sir, I opened Flappy Bird also. Okay. I'm going to save it. Okay. So, what you need to do is... Let me disconnect it. So, what you need to do is you need to keep on keep this bird in the air do not let it fall and do not let it touch the pipes okay you can't hit the pipes you can't fall down on the ground so this is what you need to do so this game is played with very simple controls all you need to do is just press a certain button which allows your character to float in the air and once it starts floating you need to get your character to pass these obstacles obstacles are basically pipes so if your character passes through these obstacles, you score points, which I am unable to because I'm very bad at this game. But I'm also See, I can't do this. This, this game is the why this game is very uh, famous is because this game is kind of very challenging. It's very difficult to score, like even five points in that. But luckily, I have scored. Four my points. best score is one point. My best score is four points. So this game is kind of actually very difficult to play. So we are going to make this game a simpler version of that using code.org. So please follow uh, the processes that I'm doing along with me. You have understood how the game works or let me explain that to you first. So you need to have one button which can help your character to float in the air. Then you have these pipes. These pipes are called obstacles. What are they called? Obstacles. Obstacles mean like hurdles. So these obstacles so if you touch the obstacles, if you touch the obstacles, you lose the game, right? If you touch the crown, you lose the game. So the game is simple. Pass the obstacles, you get the score. So let's see that how this game would work. Let me open a Word document here. So in this Word documents, we are going to write simple things about this game. The first rule of the game. The first rule of the game. Keep your bird in air. Second, don't touch the ground. Third, don't touch the obstacles. And fourth, last, score points. And how do you score points? By passing the obstacles. So if you pass the obstacles or if you run through between them, you will score points. So this game is kind of simple. There are only four rules for that. So let's go to. So let's go to. Sir, uh, I got my, sir, my best score is two points. So yes. See, this game is very difficult. It's very difficult to score more points in that. Some people some barely are. get two. Yeah, some people barely get even one also. They hit the obstacle before even crossing the first obstacle some of the times. I have done it many times. I have scored my best score today and that is four. And that was very lucky that I scored that much. Yes. So follow what I am doing so that we could also make this sort of a game. And then you guys can share this game through WhatsApp to your friends and they can play that also. 
so we are going to go code.org once we are on this website you know the practice that we do we go to learn one second sir let me search learn view more sir so, sir i found i found flappy bird code me too i clicked on it if you guys have all opened this page where you have clicked on learn already so we now go towards the next thing that, that is, is already yes that is scroll down and go to view more okay in this view more in this view more we are going to further go down and there would be this flappy code right so you need to click on this one flappy code you click on flappy code and that same exercise kind of thing is going to open in front of you there is a video that if you guys want to watch this video that's an intro excuse video excuse me sir yes um how do we get out of the surfer ticket thing okay all you can do is just write code.org here in the top let me show you again sir did the first level <laughs> sir i have done my second level also okay so i think that i should close this class because you guys can do it yourself right because you guys are doing faster than me you guys are not waiting for your classmates also that is not a good thing okay so you type code.org at the top and then you click on learn sir can yes. you wait yeah i obviously am waiting so if you click on learn you will get onto this page so once you get onto this page you are now you need to go down scroll down and click on this view more under this r of code exercise level 3 okay so in this one you would find that flappy code game here click on that sir, one yes can you just wait time i'm about to be done about to be done sir, with what easier version when i say code.org then it says learn today build a brighter tomorrow do i, do I have to press press that bilal i guess you are not following what i am doing because you are focusing on how you need to do it first see what i am doing and then you can try to do that okay i am doing it last time for you once again so you need to type code.org in the top done and then you need to click enter once you press enter now this website would open in front of you and now you need to click here which says learn okay so you click on this one this says learn and this screen comes in front of you okay this is anyone can learn computer science and then what you can do is simply scroll down and click on view more here okay let me know when you are on this page which says all of code activities from code.org if you have any problems you can share your screen and anka help you out in that yes that is yeah because that's practicing to make a game so that's a game development exercise that's why it's like that Bilal, if you having some trouble, what you can do is share your screen now, and I will help you do. Can I share your screen? No, no need to share. Share my screen. No, no need to do that because you need to watch my screen. Now. So let me open Flappy Code, and then I'll start telling you guys what this game is about. So only four simple rules are there, and we need to work according to those rules. 
So now the first rule is that how do you make your bird fly? So for this, there is an event, the green ones, the green blocks. See, there are two color blocks here. Sky blue or turquoise colors, and then there is green color block. Okay. So green color blocks, they are going to be called events. What are they going to be called? Events. Events. Event is anything that can happen in the game. Okay. So you can touch the screen, that is an event. You can touch the bird, that is an event. So these are events. And blue colors are actions. What are the blue colors? What are the blue colors? Blue colors are action. So you need to say that if this event happens, then our action should be followed by that. So that is how your game works. There are events that there are events that generate actions okay so when click your bird should flap all you need to do is just hit the target okay so you can add this play wing sound also this way you would be able to hear the sounds of the game as well see done it. do you see the wing sound do you hear the wing yes. sound? Yes, sir. You need to touch this target and then you can go to level 2. Once you are on level 2, there is a different objective for level 2. The objective is written here at the top. Now this says you have added some ground. Now attach a block to the when hit ground block. Your code needs to end the game if you hit the ground. So this basically tells what block do you need to add it. So you say that end game when you hit the ground and sounds are up to you if you want to add some sound there you can add the sound. so now you would see a smash sound also when it hits the ground so let's run it and see if it's working yes your word is flapping high and then when it comes down it hits the ground you can go to level two. sir can you wait yeah, I'm waiting. I'm not doing it very fast. I'm actually doing it very slow. Sir, the hmm. music is funny. Yeah, the music basically makes your game more interesting. So you need to add relevant music to the game. So just imagine that you are playing a car racing game and it does not have any music in that. So that would sound boring. So yeah, music is basically something. Noise. Yes. So car noises, traffic noises, horns, these things, these elements in the game, they make your game interesting and more exciting. So that is why sounds are very important. So now this is level three. It says that when run block allows you to run the code when your game starts, try setting the level speed and flapping the target. Now, if you would pay attention here at this bottom scroll green line, is that line running or is that line static? This is stop. This is not running, right? This line is not running. So this means that you would keep on flapping and your bird would not move an inch without that. So you need to make your game dynamic by making it move. So you are going to set, set speed for your game. And now when you see it, you would see that this game has now started moving backwards so that your character can go forward so now your character is going to go forward like that so this level three was also kind of easy now we get to level four and the level four yes, says sir, i'm stuck on level four so level four says what happens when you hit an obstacle read the instructions and you can do it very easily so flappy will fly through fly through obstacles unless you write code to make him crash so what it says basically is that your flappy is not going to be bothered by these <coughs> obstacles if you haven't programmed what happens when you touch the obstacle so you are going to program that now so what have what have what used to happen in the game if we touch the obstacle let's see the rules first so it says that we can't touch the obstacle why because if you touch an obstacle you lose the game okay so now we are going to make it make this rule accordingly that when we hit an obstacle 
which action do you think would be suitable for us to lose the game? End game. Uh, yes, Bilal. Angry. Sir, I think crash. Hmm. The sound should be crash. That's fine. Uh, and but what action? These are the two actions. This makes your bird flap, and this tells that your game has ended. So if you hit an obstacle, you are going to lose this game. So you're going to end this game. So we're going to pick it up and add it here. And now let's see how it works. Sir, wait. Sir, can I see your code? No, you can see my code. I guess I have shared my screen. Okay. Actually, what you guys need to do is uh, don't focus on my code. You guys can simply do it on your own without any help from my side. So all you need to do is just make sure that this game ends when this obstacle is hit. When your bird hits the obstacle, your game ends at that point. This playing crash sound is an additional exciting tool that you are adding to your game. So now let's try to read on it. So now if you would hit the obstacle, you see, you would lose this game. So now after this, we are going to move to level five. Level five is also very interesting. This is a point. This is the level where you are going to decide how do you win this game. Or this game is going to be going to be a challenging game. Obviously, we have already noticed that. But what is the challenge in this game? The challenge in this game is to pass through the obstacles. Do not hit the obstacles. That's the challenge. So what is the reward of that? Whenever we pass an obstacle, we get to know that we have scored a point. So who do you think would be better at game? How do we decide that who is better at this game? We decided by checking the score of different players so if you want to see that who is who is doing good in this game or who is doing bad in this game we can check their scores to identify that so we say that so if you pass an obstacle there is a new block added here which says score a point so we would say that if you pass the obstacle we are going to get a point and Sir? Sir? Okay, so when we score a point, we would want to know that by some sound, let's say. So we are going to have this point sound whenever we pass that. As you know, the game is very difficult, so I'm not sure that I'm going to score any point, but I would try to. So that's how it's working right now. So level six is where you are going to combine more than one things in this game. So now you got are going point. to decide you have got a point that's good okay so in this level you are going to identify something very important and that is what happens when you click uh, I would set speed normal I will just re detach it and I will I want to show you something so what happens when we click we flap now you see that the flap code has changed it now says flap a normal amount. So I add it here and I start with small amount. So now you would see that when this happens, how high your bird jumps with that. The jump is very small. So it's flapping very small. And similarly, when I put it to very large, the jump is going to be very large. You see that when it jumps, it crosses those white clouds at the top. So this is how you can make your character jump higher or jump lower. So we would say that jump a small amount. Just to clear this level, you have to make your flappy jump or flap smaller or larger. So all we need to do is, yeah, you can, you can apply random also. Applying random would mean that 
now it's not in your hand that how this flappy jumps sometimes it's going to jump high sometimes it's going to jump sometimes it's going to jump high and sometimes it's going to jump low so that's it for our today's class last four levels are now uh, about how do you read the instructions at the top and how do you try to complete it yourself okay so these levels you are going to work on your own and try to see how you can solve them i'll see you guys tomorrow after that and i would Allah hope that is. you guys would be able to complete Allah it Allah hafiz everyone Allah hafiz Allah hafiz Allah hafiz Allah hafiz Allah hafiz Allah hafiz and do not forget to share if you have if you ever complete this try to share this in the group as well okay thank you so much everyone